How's it going YouTube? Andreas here and today we're going to talk about an interesting topic in poker and that is the one of card removal. Let's have a look at a hand that I recently played. So here I do face an under the gun open race and I have ace queen suited and elect to jam 27 big blinds um, and then I run into kings but that's not the point about this hand but why would you go all in here and not call or make a small three bet and unfold to a jab? So I'm going to illustrate that for you guys a little bit over here in the Equilab. Here is basically what an underground plus one range could look like. And having a screen, by the way, if you don't have this program, it's for free. You can download it from pokerstrategy.com and you absolutely need this program. If you have never worked with it before and you play online poker, you can't get around programs or simple programs like that, especially that, you know, the fact that they are for free. So here is a typical under the gun range plus one. It's about 13%. It could be a little bit looser. Some people are just gonna click open with a7, 6, 7 suited, but you know, I don't wanna go nitpicking here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do card removal. I'm gonna remove the ace, a queen, and a three. So, you know, I just chose a flop and it's gonna be ace, queen, three, rainbow. And it removes at least the ace and the queen because I had ace, queen to reshuffle with. Let's see what happens with the range here. You can see that the range actually gets changed drastically because of card removal. So when we do have ace, queen, our opponent has a lot less of those ace, x combinations and also everything that has a queen in it, okay? So instead of six combinations of pocket aces, it's only three, so it's only about one in 460 to have aces when we do have ace-queen. So you can see that the hands that are not affected are pocket kings, king jack, king jack suited, king ten suited, jacks, jack ten suited tens, and all these blue things that are not dark blue. So meaning he's more likely to gonna have those hands, okay? So let's again assume we're in this spot again and let's say, okay, what hand is he really calling with uh, here and what hands is he gonna fold? So let's, now we have with the card removal 137 combos that he could have. Let's go back here, zoom in a little bit. And let's say he's not gonna call me with weaker than nines. Maybe calling nines are better. And actually for 27 big ones, I don't think he's calling nines either. Also, ace jack and everything weaker than that is never calling. And then he has these hands he cannot call either. King queen suited, he can't. King queen off, he can't call either. Um, so the hands he could be calling with, ace queen, I don't think he's gonna call either because it's 27 big blinds, it's a lot. And ace queen suited, he could call. So he ends up having only these hands he could call a shove with. It's basically tens plus ace queen suited and ace king plus. But I think, you know, sometimes it's gonna fold ace queen suited as well because it's a lot of blinds. So I think a lot of people, you know, will fold ace queen as well. So we're gonna end up with 36 combinations that he's calling with. It's 3.3%. Um, given that we had him on a 13% range. That's less than a quarter of his hand. So our fold equity on the initial razor here in this hand is massive. It's gonna be 75% of the time or even a little bit more that he's going to fold. So the thing that matters in this situation is really those two blockers make him fold a ton. And then also everyone behind is basically gonna stack off with, you know, a similar range than this tens plus ace king plus. So how likely is it gonna be that they pick up these hands? Well, it's gonna be 36 out of the entire range or 3% of the time, you know, everyone is gonna show up with a big hand. And if they show up with that big hand, we're gonna have a lot of equity because we have ace queen suited here, okay? So let's have a look at the stacks behind. Okay, this guy is covered. This guy's only 300k chips, so I don't give a shit if this guy has a big hand. So it's one player, two players, three, four, five. Five players that could have these top 3% hands um, plus the initial razor. So we're gonna get through here a lot of the times 
And even if they pick up those great hands, you know, if they don't have aces, let's say they don't have aces. Well, let's see what our hand hands equity is here. Let's just zoom in one more time. We do ace queen suited. And obviously we're gonna delete the flop now. And we're gonna see, okay, we have 36% on average. So we're only short 14% to have a coin flip. And that happens so infrequently that the play here is always gonna be plus CV. Let's talk a little bit about the, our other options here. So you, if you are in this situation, you can basically decide what do you want to do? Well, you could also three bet here. The problem with three betting here is if we go back and let's say make it 275,000 is that you put in a lot of chips already with that like ace queen suit and I'm probably committing it against a lot of players already, meaning, you know, clownic maybe down here, maybe even the initial razor. So what is your plan here by three betting? Is it three bet calling? You have to know that. Is it three bet folding? And then against whom would you just, you know, elect to fold in the end? I think it's always going to be a three bet call here for 27 big plans once you put in the three bet, unless like two people shove behind you and you're absolutely sure they're going to have, you know, ace, king, queens plus all the time. Against that, you're not really going to fare that well. Also, the problem is that if this guy has a hand like king, jack suited and a pocket pair, he can actually decide to call and then stack off on boards that he's favoring him. If you have an ace queen suited, you're going to hit a lot more flops. So three betting seems a little bit more attractive because when you do flop a flusher, you have a lot of like 8% of more flops that you can put pressure on your opponent. Whereas when you do have ace queen off, so jamming seems more attractive since, you know, either you're going to flop those top pair type of hands or you're actually missing and have ace high. So in the end, flatting also is an option. But the problem with that, again, is do you really want to have a flatting range with someone having 300k chips here, you know? And then if you flat and this guy shoves, if you don't have those strong hands like kings or aces in your range and the initial raiser, when he does have nines, can come over the top and go all in. And then you're definitely not calling because against his overall range, you're still not doing that great when he four bet champs. So if you're flatting here and I'm folding this hand, it's obviously way inferior to you know, shoving yourself because a lot of the times in tournament poker, people are going to show up with coin flips and the same hand. And you actually want to be the aggressor, the guy who goes all in first. So they're going to have to fold the 50% of equity. So very classic tournament spot. And if you're in this situation, I think you have to shove here for the, all the reasons mentioned. And think always of these blocker effects. This video is mainly going to be about blocker effects. And I've clearly shown you how having an ace and a queen helps you a ton in this situation, okay? Equity matters when you do get it in, but let's say you have a hand like nines here, it's clearly not as great of a spot. If you shove here, um, you're not removing pocket queens from your opponent's range. You're not removing pocket aces near, uh, nearly as much. And you're also not, you know, you're also flipping against everything else. You know, you could have ace king, you're not removing that. Uh, and against coin flip, I mean, sure, you're okay against ace king, but the bigger pairs are more likely. Also, you're not flipping with tens and jacks. So the nines are much weaker here against a stack of range. And therefore here, I would elect to fold the pocket nines in this very situation. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video about blocker effects. I tried to keep it short. I think it's about eight minutes. And if you do like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel to see more of that in the future. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. By the way, tomorrow or night, today at 7 p.m. and on Wednesday, I'm streaming the great game of Pot Limit Omaha cash game on Twitch. Make sure to follow that as well. It's down in the description. See you guys.